uh, just state your name. Oh yeah, I'm Christina Mortali. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm really into yeah, Daredevil right now. <laughs> yeah, Solid. I'm really into Daredevil. I'm just watching the second season of it right now. Oh no, wait, I changed my answer. The Office. The Office is my number one favorite. Um, I have seen every episode of The Office in full 20 times so far. Hold on just one second. You got it. Objection! <laughs> <laughs> you are in, you are in heaven. You are in nerd heaven, Mister. Can I see the rest of your outfit? Oh yeah. Her eyes are right there. Oh, is that something you might have made? No, I do sew though. I do make outfits, but no. Oh, you do. Good. Are you reasonable compared to some of the outfitting places? I don't know. I don't want to compare myself, but I do enjoy doing it a lot. I do sew my own cosplays. Awesome. But this one I got. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait, hold on. <laughs> gotcha. Welcome, girls. You look smashing. Thank you. Uh, where's Scooby Doo? <laughs> so it looks like there's a very kind of. Uh, toxic culture <laughs> going <laughs> on um, <laughs> in the really nerd community, <laughs> particularly <laughs> with <laughs> online harassment <laughs> over over feminist <laughs> critiques of game. video games <laughs> and uh, other various <laughs> geek <laughs> mediums. So, so, what do you think is at the root of all of this? <laughs> Something that oh I struggle to understand even today. I never figured video games were something that were just supposed to be a guy thing. Well, it's deep-rooted misogyny down to its core. I mean, it's a lot of people who are raised in this misogynistic society. They don't know better, but they do these misogynistic things. They don't know what they're doing it, but they're harming people in the process. So I think it's a product of the society that we live in that most spaces aren't safe for women. And it's, that also, unfortunately, happens in the nerd community. Um, one thing that I'm really happy about with Combust is that we do pride ourselves in being one of the only spaces is where it really is safe for women and is safe for people of different genders to really thrive and we try to bash misogyny as much as possible because we are a self-proclaimed feminist convention. What's most people's reaction when you say it's a feminist convention? Why is feminist such a dirty word? That's what I'm wondering. I'm not sure, but if they don't like feminism, they're not at this convention. It just doesn't suit them. So um, everyone that's here is a big fan of feminism, which I love. It's great to have have an environment where we know that people are okay with this thing of feminist convention. Yeah. <laughs> right, so haters gonna hate? Haters gonna hate. Sorry. We don't want them here. <laughs> okay. So, oh crap. Uh, one second. <laughs> it's a really good cosplay. The dark side of the force surrounds this convention. <laughs> Do you think that uh, uh, artists <laughs> should be able to just do whatever they <laughs> want to <laughs> with whatever <laughs> they create and just <laughs> let people make up their <laughs> own mind about it? Yeah. Or do you believe that comes with a certain level of responsibility? Well, everyone has a right to create whatever they want. I can't say, you can't make this, but when you create whatever you want, it comes with the repercussions. So you can make something that's racist or sexist, but then I have the right to stand up and say, hey, that's racist and sexist. So they have a right to create whatever they want, and I have a right to say, hey, I don't think that's okay. Do you think there's a distinction between uh, uh, racism slash sexism and uh, just politically incorrect, or do you believe there's a, no separation between the two? I think they're very closely linked, that they coexist together, and that very often things that are racist are also sexist and vice versa, that they kind of, they're both terrible things that sometimes share the same environment. So, what are some PC things to keep in mind when attending a convention? Like just for all the people out there, 
who might not uh, know. You said there are some things that a lot of guys uh, do that they don't realize they're doing that uh, they bother women. Do you have any tips? A big thing we're pushing this year is pronouns. So we have our pronouns written on our badges this year and we encourage people to write what pronouns they use. For example, I use they, them pronouns. So when addressing me, I prefer that people say they and them versus she and her. Um, and so we're really pushing that because we really want people to be respectful of that. So that's the big thing that we're pushing this year for not us. Uh, can my pronoun be I am Groot? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll let you get back to work now. Thank you so much. Thank You're welcome. You. Thank you very much. Well, Captain Jack Sparrow. Can you just state your names if you wish? Sure. My name's Chip. Uh, I'm Sammy. Great to meet you. I'm Gabe. Nice to meet you. You're just trolling this entire convention, aren't you? My biggest question is, how do we, as men, um, know that we may be encroaching on harassment, un un unsuspectingly? Is there some things we could avoid? I suppose the best thing to be aware of would be body language. Anything that's drawn away and closed in would probably be a sign that the person you're speaking to is uncomfortable. So that would be a chance to say, am I overstepping boundaries? Are you comfortable? And make sure that the person that you're talking to feels all right. I think would be the most important thing. Yeah, just paying attention to how the person you're talking to seems to be reacting to how you are approaching them. Uh, and it could be very subtle things, but if yeah. they are very personal the replies, for example, if they won't make eye contact, things like that generally mean that the person might be uncomfortable, and you should think about what you're doing that might be causing that, I guess would be my answer to that. Um, and just being aware that, as a man, you could just unintentionally be having some effect on people, even if you can't really tell, so just be aware of that in general when you're approaching someone to talk to them. Great. Um, yeah. In my mindset as a man, you know, women and in general, even Stevens, you know what I mean? I try to project myself as neither guy or girl. <laughs> um, and that's worked the last couple of years because I was that jerk at one time, not even knowing, you know, that there was more similars, sim similarities versus yeah. dissimilarities. I, I think that'll be really good. I wish there was just a big button everyone could wear or something. If only it were that easy. <laughs> Definitely make things a lot clearer and a lot of people are very much more comfortable. Yeah, just making sure everyone is feeling safe is a priority for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, keep spreading the messages and hopefully sooner rather than later we'll all be on the same yeah. comfort level. <laughs> And it will probably be a very long process, but something we have to work for, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Well, feel good. You're at the forefront of of the movement. <laughs> Some nice artisan stuff here. You guys get some What are you selling? Who did the Tad Cooper? Wow. Thank you. Outstanding. Um, my name is Scrumpy. I am from Lincoln, Massachusetts. And I'm selling a bunch of books, both original art and fan art. Oh, nice. I see so you have some artwork from Journey just to your right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Journey book. Oh, the one where they were like writing on the Wow. <laughs> That's really cool. This will be my second year, so this is my second year doing Columbus. Are there some items that you really don't want to sell? Oh, they're in here. <laughs> they're in here? Uh, and highly overpriced, right? No, I mean, when I first started a con the convention, I didn't have enough fan art to do. Um, and I was thinking, oh, I'll sell all my original stuff, and everybody was like, well, you should have some other stuff, but I didn't have enough. So I was scraping the bottom of the barrel of stuff I had previously created, and it was for my boyfriend, on, who does reviews on YouTube, and mm -hmm. stuff that I just whipped out in like two seconds, and I'm like, oh, I'm cringing at it now, but I still keep it out, just hidden. <laughs> Memory's sake. Yeah. Um, 
What What is your favorite piece of all, if you had to choose one today? Uh, I like the cuttlefish or the skull. Like, the cuttlefish. I like the cuttlefish the best, the stippled ones. Yeah, that, the show is amazing on that. Yeah. It, was, it was one of those ones that I was really excited to do, so it went by really quickly, like I finished it in about a week. Very, it's very, very talented. This skull here is, um, I like the shape a lot better than the candy skulls. <laughs> the, the sugar skulls? Yeah, the sugar skulls. So I've been saying that wrong all the time. <laughs> Yeah, we had a, a music festival and we used one, a skull. And where do you go from here with your with your wares? Um, I think my next one is in Framingham, Massachusetts, hopefully. Don't know yet. <laughs> so you're quite mobile. You go where the show is. Um, I stay with them, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, even Maine, if I can. If you could just state your name first so I get that part right. Yeah. Um, right now? Yeah. Okay. Nina Petrosian. Um, my first convention uh, where I sold was um, Anime Next 2010, so I was 16 years old. Uh, turning 17 that weekend. Wow, that special was memory, huh? Yeah, it was a present for my mom and dad. They were like, here you go, here's a table. And then they got me a bunch of machines, so I went crazy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I started really seriously watching anime when I was 11, and seriously drawing when I was 11. So, 11 years now. Are these prints, are these silk screened, or are they? So they're, um, the, they're vaporized into the shirt. Does one item sell more more so than the others? Um, they're kind of all the same, but I've had a lot of luck with my prints. So, oh, rings. Rings sell very well. Yeah. Everyone loves cute rings. Myself included. I kind of have ideas spontaneously. I write them all down. I make a little sketch or doodle in my sketchbook, and then um, when I have free time, I sit down and I draw it all out. And it usually takes me around a month to do a single drawing, so it's a lot of detail and work into it. Yeah, that's very obvious. <laughs> that's what stands out. That and the the color the color coatings you got going on. I love color. Yeah, the the brighter seems to bring out the really faint color in the the background color. Kind of makes it seep through. Very talented. Is this uh, an associate? Yeah, this is my boyfriend Matthew. He drives and carries. Yeah. Yes, I'm Steiner Feldman, and I'm the author and artist of a series I created called New RPG. It's my own original series where like, a teenager who lives a normal life, but then he, all of a sudden he gains like super good powers and abilities. And he goes on like this huge adventure. And also, uh, based on my manga, we also have this card game as well that me and my brother both co created. And it's like a four player battle royale party game. We play like with like a whole deck of cards and dice. It's, it's pretty fun. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I also do freelance jobs. I also do convention scenes a lot. I also. Um, <laughs> I guess that's pretty much everything I do, you know? <laughs> uh, freelance, Parker. Uh, need more pictures of that Spider-Man. <laughs> I can do Spider-Man for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. This is my um, fan art part, where I just do like like a lot of fan art through digital media, like Photoshop, Illustrator, stuff like that. <laughs> And do you like to keep most of your work um, PG, so to speak? Yeah, I do actually, because I'm like a family-friendly artist, you know? Okay. Yeah, it seems um, what's out there that's getting a lot of views is the more violent, <laughs> um, almost sexist, <laughs> in a sense. 
they're getting a lot more views than the family. There's like multiple reviews. Yeah. I Any ideas on why that? that? No idea. <laughs> I have no idea to um, give you. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate your honesty. I don't know either. I think um, appealing to the younger groups helps raise yeah. stronger, smarter people. <laughs> My process, how I make my my own original series called New Era G, it's it's basically I do sketches in the beginning, and um, and then I I do like a lot of sketches for like each page, and then like probably like about like a week later, you know, like if I go look through all the sketches I've done, if I feel like something didn't like go on through. Um, I feel that, oh, maybe I might want to erase this, you know, change this panel here and there. Then I do ink work, I do, um, I do, uh, I do the effects, I do the blacks, the whites, the tones, the gradients, and also the text. And as you can see, there's like a lot of cool, like, text words like this going on here. And also like the speech bubbles going on. Um, this is more like a hobby of mine you know okay yeah. would it be nice it, w it would be great if I you know like like, like like if I got like a deal with like a big company and they want to like you know produce this like in large quantities you know do a lot of promotion and marketing you know it, w it would be great because actually I also have something else here which is a game called New RG All Stars which is a card game that me and my brother created and it's like a four player party game and, and it features my characters in it. So it's, that, that's also another cool thing of venture that, that I've done during my spare time. And it's age six and up, yep. so that's age gotta be helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, yeah, to exactly. span <laughs> all those age groups. Yeah. <laughs> and to see your, your own characters involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's super awesome. <laughs> And is this played through the computer? Or is it a card game? It's a, it's a physical card game. You know, oh, like, good. Um, good. Like, like um, if you have like you know three of your friends, you could do like a four-player battle royale. You can do roulette mode. You could also do teams in that game. It's, it's pretty awesome. And we also have like um, other things going in the works for for that series as well. My name is Kara. I'm from right outside of Springfield, Mass. So really? Half hour from now yes. here. Yep. Yeah. And I have. Tea cozies, perler bead creations, and custom clay figurines. I will take all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people will request custom pieces. Everything I have here, they're from pop culture. There's some Disney characters, um, Pokemon. Um, that's a character from a well known Japanese TV show. Um, which one? That's from uh, Sailor Moon. Wow, it really trips your eyes out. Yes, it does. <laughs> Pokeball, go! Just kidding, I'm not going to throw it. One of the greatest things is when somebody says, I love what you've done, I want to make that part of my life. So I try to figure most of it's recreatable anyways. I mean, it might be unique. I actually got started in this. Um, somebody had made clay figurines into a chess set from the video game Final Fantasy VII. And it wasn't a piece they had for sale. I think they were selling raffle tickets. It was one of those, the winning ticket might not be sold situations. So I recreated it for a friend of mine and said, you know what, that was actually a lot of fun. Cool. How do I pick my colors? Yeah, for a certain project. Oh, it depends on what I'm doing. A lot of it's commissioned, so it's specific things. Um, first stuff, more like the bows, just whatever seems bright and fun. And I think pop culture is getting kind of gritty, so it's nice to have something a little more whimsical. And this piece that you're putting together now? This is um, the Pokemon Eevee, or it will be, hopefully soon. So I'm TX Watson. Uh, my name is Faith Gregory. And uh, we're the editors of Solar Punk Press, which is uh, the first sustained publication in um, Solar Punk, which is an emerging genre of science fiction that deals in positive visions of the near future. So basically what we do is uh, we publish one short story per month uh, and we commission one artist to do the cover art for this story. We publish online, we do a podcast and we also do an ebook. 
These are our print scenes. So basically what happens is we do an editorial. We have some Oh, it's right there. And then we do splash art, and these scenes go to our Patreon supporters, and we also sell the all the fonts, like Conquest here at Central College. Well, Solar Punk emerged as a genre in late 2014. Um, I've been interested in science fiction my whole life, uh, but uh, Solar Punk in particular, I've been paying a lot of attention to since around then. Uh, in uh, at ReaderCon uh, last year, midsummer, we um, talked to some people who run web magazines and decided that we can that we thought it would be a good idea to try and make a magazine. And then over the course of the last six hours, we came up with a business plan, reserved the URL, and uh, set up a publishing schedule. Um, our first issue came out. October. Yes. I think it was October uh, of last year. Congratulations on that. Yeah. And, yeah. Of it. and what's your favorite part of the process? Um, I really love getting to um, read the submissions from especially new authors, people who are just getting, um, you know, getting their feet in the uh, genres. I love being able to find authors who are interested in putting out this kind of work and you know, being someplace that they can do so. I like editing the stories. There have been stories that we turned down because while we really liked parts of them, they just didn't fit the solar pump premise. Um, and it, it felt like it would be too much to ask the authors to change major aspects of the story to make it fit the genre. So those ones we, you know, we turned them down, but we let them know, uh, you know, what other publications we think might be interested in. Our main goal for being here is not even necessarily to make money. My name is TJ Gary, and what I like is to, how I gotta get it, is that I typically listen to music, and depending on how uh, music flows, my thought process will flow. And typically what I'll find is I'll look around in the space, I'll watch my favorite cartoons, and I'll just become inspired by the, their backgrounds or the moments that they have. And for that, that also helps me kind of create how I want my characters to look, how I want my scenery to feel, and such. And after that, it just kind of flows around itself, and I kind of work around all of that. Um, when it comes to like what media, it can it can spray a lot. But typically, what I like to do is listen to electronic music, music that's made from uh, sounds that the uh, that the person who's making the music does, like makes his own sounds and puts them together and orchestrates them um, on uh, the computer. And most of the time, I love those a lot. And then other than that, it's probably uh, punk rock that I listen to. I love when they kind of like talk about what you know, what gets them mad, what they love, and then kind of like when they talk about how they feel like the world can be and how it relates to them. And I just love it when that, you know, it always just pumps me up and gets me going. And uh, would you say one of these is um, a punk rock? Yeah, inspired, perhaps? Inspired by punk rock. <laughs> and then electronica, maybe? Uh, most likely this one. Most it was from a very, uh, a very uh, melodic uh, music. It was very like soothing and relaxing. And it just kind of like puts you to sleep. So that's what it made me think of. How, how have you been able to um, support your art? I mean, all of this digital media is expensive. Oh, yeah. Do, do you do this full time and sell? Do you have to work five jobs? Do you have to. <laughs> or do you have a great mom? Yeah, I feel like it's um, sometimes it needs support from my uh, parents, but I do have a job. And. I try my best to work at the job as much as possible, possible without interfering with school. And with that money that comes in, I try to use that to dedicate to further my studies. And I always try to find some slight deal to get something cheaper to fit my budget. That's right. Great answer. <laughs> um, thank you for sharing some of that.